I was just shoved out. Uh, this next person and I both know to a thing or two about space, exploration at least. Um, he's a wonderful person. He would be my first pick if I were ever on an island that was sinking and full of treasure that I had to rescue really quickly. <laughs> he's a wonderful person and a dear friend of mine, Mr. Will Wheaton. That moment when you're introduced by your friend who landed a spaceship on another planet and stuck the landing, <laughs> coming after the moment where you were introduced by Strong Bad. And honestly, what I really want to do is not be in the show at all and just sit up there and enjoy it. But having been introduced by two, uh, well, a cartoon character and a scientist who I respect, uh, I will now endeavor to live up to uh, the introductions by telling you some stories, all of which are true. A couple of years ago, uh, my wife and I put a bunch of sod down in our front yard. Before I get into the rest of this story, I should tell you that if there are younger people or those with sensitive ears or people who would be offended by the phrase come slick Zamboni now would be a very good time to take a roughly 24, and, 24 minute and 4 second uh, bathroom break you're welcome so we put a bunch of sod down in our front yard uh, as one does in Southern California and uh, stood back and looked at the beautiful lawn that we had bought and uh, went to bed and got up the next morning and the sod in my yard was rolled back all over the place as if aliens or children or some other form of asshole had come around <laughs> to roll back the sod. So uh, I rolled the sod all back out, put it back nice and flat, made it look really good, tamped it down, stood out there with my hose, realized I should not have done all of this in just my boxers. But fuck it, I'm a suburban dad, you guys. That's how it goes. So uh, I uh, uh, waved to my neighbors and went back inside. Came out the next morning, same thing. Just rolled back up everywhere. And this is important because the roots in the sod need to grow into the dirt so that it becomes a lawn instead of a bunch of patchwork pieces of, of uh, sod grass. Uh, so I wasn't quite sure what to do. So I went and asked my neighbors, you know, what do you do? What, what is going on and what do you do? And they, they said, it's probably skunks. And the skunks roll up the sod to eat grubs that are in the dirt. And I'm like, are you sure it's skunks and not hobos? Because that sounds like hobo activity to me. <laughs> um, they were pretty sure it wasn't hobos. Uh, but they said, one of my neighbors said, yeah, look, this is what you do. You go to the Smart and Final and you buy a jug of uh, red pepper flakes, like the ones that you put on pizza. And, uh, and you sprinkle them all around the edge of the lawn and they, they put out this smell, and the skunks don't like it, and the skunks won't go past it. So do that. It's like, oh, that's great. It's a good idea. It's environmentally friendly. Uh, it's easy, and uh, it allows me to own, like I have a legitimate reason to go and buy like seven pounds of red pepper flakes. <laughs> I love the spicy food, you guys. So I'm like, I could probably do something with this afterward. I bet it would go great in cookies and things. Uh, so I went, to this, I went to the Smart Final, I came home, and I went out, and I put it all, and I'm sort of like, uh, it's like that parable of the guy who's like, you know, he's like, and I was sowing seeds here, and I was doing that there, and then this is the part of the Bible that says the gay people are bad. i like, no, actually, no, the part's not in the Bible, sorry. So I'm going around, sowing all around the edge of the yard, and I get a really nice barrier, sort of like a, a, a it's, it's sort of a wall, you know, and I realize that I'm playing tower defense against skunks. <laughs> You know, spread it all out, I stand back and I survey my work, I'm very proud of myself. I go inside, put the red pepper flakes down, and uh, realize that I have to pee. So I, so I go, it's not a big deal guys, everybody pees. Look, I know they did the Everybody Poops book, which is great because, you know, you, that's pooping's awesome. <laughs> the iPad has revolutionized pooping. I have gotten so good at Carcassonne. And I have two gigantic hemorrhoids. Um, but I went, I went, into the, went into the bathroom and I, uh, uh, I put up the toilet seat and I uh, began to take care of business as one does. Finished my business, I flushed the toilet and I walked out. 
And my brain goes, hey, your dick's on fire. <laughs> what an odd thing for your brain to say to you. So I'm like, brain, I think you're confused. There is no smoke. And my brain goes, wait for it. <laughs> oh fuck, my dick's on fire! <laughs> so I run into the bedroom where my wife is, hoping to not be bothered by me. It's kind of her default condition. <laughs> Anne, 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 my dick's on fire! <laughs> living with me has done this to my wife she looks up and she goes oh I realize that the reason my dick is on fire is that I did not wash my hands after I put the red pepper flakes everywhere so I enter that phase of fiery dick panic <laughs> where uh, I, where this is like this is the only way anything is going to get done no thinking is going to happen if I stay in the same place and I got I to gotta go and I have to do something to, to take care of this I have to put the fire out what do I do, what do I do oh right, right, wait, I remembered somewhere because I love spicy foods I, I had eaten in this uh, uh, Indian restaurant oh right, right, I remember okay, I had the jalapenos Right, that are like stuffed with a little bit of cheese, and they're amazing. They come out angry, by the way. <laughs> Every time you eat a jalapeno, when you shit, it cosplays as Wolverine. I remember at the Indian restaurant, I was like, I'm gonna have the spiciest thing in the world. And they were like, ha ha, you're adorable, here you go. And I eat the spiciest thing in the world and my mouth is on fire, right? And the guy's like, here, have some, have some milk, that'll help the, the thing. And I was like, milk, milk, I got it. I run to the kitchen. <laughs> grab, the, grab the milk, I go to the, the counter, I get the glass, I fill up the glass <laughs> with the milk. And now I'm standing in my kitchen with my dick in a glass of milk. Maybe if I... There's nothing sexy about this. It's the least erotic thing you will ever see in your life. I imagine that this will be gifed out of context. It, it does nothing to quench the burning that has now spread to my balls on account of uh, transference and contact and whatnot. So now I have my dick and balls are on fire and I have this cup of spicy dick milk This is a true story, it's in a glass that has a happy face on it I don't know what I'm gonna, like, and what am I gonna do with this? Like. I can't just pour it down the sink, that's wasteful. <laughs> well, maybe. I did not drink the spicy dick milk. I ended up putting the spicy dick milk in the, in the sink. Because I wasn't in my right mind. See, if I didn't still have fiery dick and balls, I would have thought, this is like the greatest practical joke in the history of life. It is like, it's ready to go. Like, it has set me up. I can make lemonade out of these fiery dick lemons. Like, it would be amazing. Um, so that doesn't work. So I return to my original plan, which was running around the house like this. I get a paper towel 
and I put it in like it, the ice in the water, and I'm doing this, which is weird. Like you know, as a 13-year-old boy, I tried to put all kinds of weird things on my wiener just to see what they would do, because that's what you do at that age. Strangely, uh, a frozen paper towel was not one of them. <laughs> this is a true story. Eventually, it just settles down. Like, it just, like, calms down after what feels like an eternity. I go into the bedroom, and I have learned... My wife and I have been together for 18 years. This year, we will have been married for 14 years. We're very, very close. Thanks. We have that, we have that amazing relationship where we don't have to say things to each other, you know? Like, like there's just there's body language and there's like just this sort of connection just from being around the same person for so very long. And what was getting, what was coming off of my wife was, do not fucking bring your fiery dick anywhere near me. I will kill you. And I can't say that I blamed her. So I took my fiery dick out to the couch. And we slept it off. The sod looked amazing in the morning, by the way. The skunks did not come back. And all I had to do was stand in the kitchen with my dick and a cup of milk to make it happen. So really, the moral of the story, everybody, is when you put down sod, just go put your dick in a cup of milk and stand in the kitchen and pour a little bit out for the prophet Elijah and you're good to go. I, uh, thanks. Um, the thing is my wife and my son are in the audience tonight. They're sitting next to each other. I don't know who is more mortified by this story. <laughs> <laughs>